Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today you'll know how to turn one of these paper books into something like an ebook. Welcome to Know How. I'm Aya Zaktar. I'm trying to keep up with my height with Patrick Delahanty of Twit. This is Twit's how-to show. We show you a fun project that you could do yourself if you so choose to. Now, we got this email from a fellow, uh, Patrick, who said he wanted to turn his books into e-books. Here's what he said. He's followed the Twit network for some years now. He wants to see a show how to make an e-book uh, from a regular book from A to Z. He has these books he wants from 19th century Finnish children's books that he wants to send to his kids. So he can't just buy the ebook. Apparently very difficult to get. So that's what he's gonna do. And so we wanted to figure out a way to scan these books and make some kind of book scanner. And what happened was we were wondering why Patrick is here. Because the first thing I did was I wandered over to Patrick's desk and I'm like, hey Patrick, how the heck do we design a non-destructive book scanner? What, what yeah. did you come up and, with? And uh, so the first idea we had was to just uh, take your phone and take pictures of the book. So we want to take a so. phone, and like that would be our, our camera-based thing. And then we try yeah. to figure out how to make a rig for this, because otherwise you're going to just stand there and do yeah. that all day. And what's the point of that? Yeah. And so we started drawing out ideas. So uh, if we go to our iPad sketch pad right now, you can see that we wanted like something to hold the camera here, and it'd have a, a, like a stand. And then there'd be a base for the books. Let me get this out of the way. We have our book here. But then we realized this camera, though, would need some kind of like, it has to be a certain height away. So we need yeah. a telescoping design. So it starts getting yeah, more and more complicated. What we had tried, on, at least on my iPhone, I discovered that the length of the phone away from the book seemed to be the same as the actual height of the book. Right, because the thing is so. about it, it's not like we were using any like fancy DSLRs. We were using our phones to figure yeah. this out because you can get an app to do all this kinds of crazy stuff. But the idea was how are we going to mount our phone to something so we can always do this. And then as we were doing this design, let's get a different color here for, we wanted lights. So we had some lights here. Yeah. And we're like, well, we'll put some lights there. And as we were doing this, we're realizing this is starting to get really heavy on top. All of these things, these elements are yeah. there. We're going to cast shadows. Seems like a mess. Yeah. And we had talked about the, the focal length of the book you could actually raise up the book instead of raising and lowering the camera. Right, so we could move so. that up or down or move the base up or down. So this started getting yeah. more and more complicated. And what happened was I started thinking like, hey, you know what, I overthink things way too much. This is unnecessary. Maybe we could try a different design. We started messing with, uh, what were we, I was looking at uh, monitor arms, right? So it'd have an arm like this yeah. that would hold a monitor here and this would go to a wall. Like that makes a lot of sense, your monitor would appear, but what if we put a camera there? And you were eyeing the, arms on the sides of Alex's chair. <laughs> Take those off, too. I was, yeah, I was at Alex's chair, and I was like, what if I just rip off the arm, you know? But the thing is, I wanted a continuous motion, because it, yeah. it ratcheted a couple of times. So I didn't like that either, and then eventually I figured out an answer, a guitar stand. I, I'm a guitar player. Guitar stand looks like this. You've got a little bass here for the guitar and legs, right? So it's a really bad design there. And this part does go up and down. It telescopes. It's really helpful. And it costs like 10 bucks on Amazon. Super cheap. We could use this. But that didn't really work out. So what we did is I well, came was, up with it. It was too high, right? It was too high. It was uh, it, the, the height of the guitar stand was about 24 inches away when we needed 12 and needed to move back and forth between there. Yeah. So what I did is I challenged Patrick to come up with his own design. And I've got my own design for a book scanner. And so we'll show you my design first. And we did this, what, yesterday? All right, so the original design I wanted to go with uh, was impossible at this particular hardware store I went to. So I started redesigning the thing on the fly. I went to aisle 30, and then I went to the lamps, and I went all over the place. I like the idea of using a lamp and a carriage bolt. Now, a carriage bolt, that's this guy. It comes with a plate. And I thought that'd be a really cool base for uh, a camera, so I can have the camera there. Maybe I can affix this bolt to a lamp like this. And what happens is, as it floats over a book, 
will have this nice parallel camera the whole time. Uh, so we're going to have to somehow affix this carriage bolt to this piece of metal. We're going to use a D-clip, or if you're looking at it there, it looks like a B-clip. It's going to allow you to just attach it like this, and you would attach this to the bottom of the lamp here. Now, this is usually meant for cables. But before we do all of that, though, we want to make sure we know where to mount this, because we're also going to be using this lamp as a light source for our books. So I'm just going to like randomly place it somewhere. I'm going to use a piece of tape to kind of affix it to see maybe this will be a good spot. Just going to affix some tape here real fast. No, nothing spectacular. The point is to try to find the right space. If this is wrong, we'll move the tape and try to figure out where it goes. Maybe mark it and see how it goes. So we've got our bolt on there. We've got to put our plate. We've got a piece of Velcro so we can attach it to our phone. We took an Android phone and we have this uh, not so stellar case. We don't mind mucking it up, but it allows us to have a nice secure connection. So we're going to turn this into here. There we go. Trying to get that nice and level. That's sort of level. So that's a, a nice little uh, uh, approximation. We're going to attach our phone here. Let's hope that the tape holds up. Let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, see the phone itself is not tremendously heavy, so this shouldn't be a big deal. We're going to go to the camera app right there. We're going to plug our lamp in so we can see how it works. We've got a book right here. I'm going to open it up to, uh, this is a Canon manual. So we're going to see, is, is the phone itself going to cast a shadow? Is this actually going to work? And if you see, I'm going to make some adjustments here. You're going to make adjustments to the book, try to line it up properly with the page and then you would mark this out we're going to have a, a desk blotter and mark it out in a minute but you can see right there we have a pretty well lit page we do have some darkness over here probably need another little light source that way but this is actually a pretty good start when it comes to setting up our little book area so we're going to check this out on this side yeah that looks pretty good let's try it with a larger book to make sure that we can do larger scale things so this is a extreme user's manual the zephyr extreme so we're going to try to just float this to match and right now the book is not lined up so we just got to you can see that the actual phone is, is uh, what's the word it's tilting so I need to change that up but you can see that we're not having any uh, any shadows really cast from the phone itself so there we go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug this guy we're gonna attach this clip to around there we're gonna mark that area or location of where the carriage bolt should be somewhere there and there and obviously, because we have some play with the Velcro, we can move things around a little bit. It's kind of, it's kind of handy that way. We're going to have to unplug this, turn this over so we can get into there. Now, this D-clip has enough play that I can slide this through. Let's double check that for sure. So if I fix this here and I wanted to go right through this, I could go through and have it turn and it'll hold and clang, right? The point is, I don't want to be holding this while I'm trying to screw in the clamp here or clip. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use a self-drilling screw and put it right into this clip to hold it there. For my own sanity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this down so I don't have to hold the clip while I'm trying to screw this in. may not be the best idea, but it's my idea. Due to my frustration with manual tools, I've decided to use something called a drill. This is a power tool. Will this work? We're about to find out. This is the fun stuff. When you actually build things, and I'm doing this for the first time, this is not the third or fourth revision. This is revision one, and I'm telling you something, by the way. Even though we're making a book scanner today, there's a good chance we'll be making a second rev, a third rev, just like the teleprompters I've built before. This is a means to an end. We want to make a book into an ebook. This is the first go around. So there's bound to be problems, and that's part of the learning process. Then you figure this stuff out for yourself, and you're like, oh, okay. And we're about to find out if this is a good idea or a bad idea. Oh, we got progress. Okay. Just want to make sure we don't lock these two pieces together. Okay. So the drill is our, our friend. Technology, there you go figure. Technology helped us do something. Duh. All right, so I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to tighten this down by hand just to have that authentic feel, you know. Uh, let's get some This Old House music going. All right. Good. All right. There we go. Now we have a clip in place. The question is, did I ruin the flexibility of this? No. See that? You can actually see, though. I don't know if you can see this. You can get in there. Do you see that tiny little 
dent right there, that guy, by my fingernail. The screw's a little long, but, uh, well, we're making something, aren't we? Surprise, 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 folks. It's, it's, uh, it's coming together. All right. So obviously, though, we don't want this to move around like this. There's a lot of play. What we're going to do is something really simple. We're going to add tape on both sides of this so it can't move left or right. Let's build in a nice, big, fat spacer. That's effectively what I'm doing. Now that stops it from moving there. See how that stopped? That's good. So now what we want to do is build the same thing on the other side. Look at that. It's actually working so far. It's not even moving side to side. All right, so far so good. We're going to attach the plate to the bolt. This is the base. We've got our Velcro here for our phone. I'm going to pop this through. And obviously you have play here too. So if you want to have a different camera or something, you could do that too. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Higher, 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 level. Level. All right. So far, so good. So what we have here is, I want to see if this works. Who wants to see if the little trapeze man will hold on? Ooh, look at that. That's smooth. Huh? That's not magnetic or anything. <laughs> Let's take our phone, pop it back into place. And there's our book. We happen to have a round book with a little level on it. It's an exciting, no, that's not what we're going to do. So if we're taking a look at this whole setup, you can see that there's this, this angle. Everything's this way. We're going to want the book to line up with the camera, that kind of thing. Right now we're at the edge of a table, so you have to, you know, move things around. If you have this at a different location, like we will have upstairs, it, it'll look a little different. It's a little harsh. What we probably want to do, if we can, is add some diffusion over here. We talked about that in our lighting episode uh, back when we were at Tom's studio. And or we might want to add some, some lighting right here on this side so we can get a nice even picture. Now there's a lot of play in this, right? You can see that it moves around a little bit. What I'm going to do is something wacky. I'm probably going to pair my phone with a Bluetooth mouse so I don't have to keep touching it. Because once this is set up with the style of book you want, you're going to simply what, turn the page. And you're not going to move the rig, you're going to move the book, right? There we go. We have this, and we'll do the same over and over again. And the cool thing about the articulating arm design, this, this swing arm design, is that it accommodates a lot of styles of books. You don't necessarily have to be locked down to a particular thing. We do have the movement of the arm. If we have a, some, for some reason, we want to take a photo like this, we could. Uh, if you want to take two pages at once, you could probably try to do that. I think we could actually do that. I didn't realize how versatile this is. But then again, you want to have high resolution when you're taking these photos. So you probably want to have, unless it's something like text where you don't really care, you probably want higher resolution. But for like schematics like this, you probably want uh, each page like that so we can see it later. And that is the thing you're going to see in the next couple of seconds. Let's go back to me standing upstairs, probably above me somewhere. Uh, hopefully he hasn't broken this yet. Did you break it me? I did not break it, me. I'm really glad that passed me took care of that. Uh, but like I was mentioning in that video, that uh, I just redesigned this on the fly in the hardware store because what I wanted to do was I wanted to recreate something I had in labs, which was like a piece of metal. I used to go to college. You ever go to college, Patrick? Yeah, four years. You ever go to like a, a, a science lab where they have this, this basic uh, wooden base with a yeah. stick coming out of it and then another stick attaches. Yeah, and you tighten the connector piece. Whatever that bracket is yeah. was not available at the hardware store where I went. So I started running around getting these parts. But I, my first design didn't work out so well. Brian, can we run exactly how what would have happened if you did not talk to me when I was going to do my first design? Oh, yeah, I almost got electrocuted. But Brian happens to have a brain. So we'll put that on, uh, on Google+. Plus. That, that's for you guys. If you guys are watching this on you Google+, Plus. My, my original plan was to put it on the top there. Then the, the guy behind the camera is like, hey, aren't you going to go into the wire? And he was right. <laughs> this goes to show you, when you're designing on the fly, check where the electrical is before you start drilling holes into stuff. Thank you, Brian. So Brian Burnett, producer, I mean, a TD extraordinaire, saved my life yesterday because I was just going like an idiot and going, wait a minute. Oh, I made a horrible mistake. <laughs> so thankfully, the man who is in the darkness took care of me. That's the shadowy figure of Brian And there's Burnett. still a show today. There's still a show today, thankfully. And this is the actual rig, and this does work. I took some photos of a book here. This is my uh, Aristotle book that I found on the TNT set. It's probably Tom's book. You know, he reads yeah. fancy stuff that he left here. Now, Patrick, I don't think you went with anything as uh, 
as silly as this, did you? Well, how much did this whole rig end up costing you? The whole rig, because the lamp itself was about, the lamp was 25 bucks. Now, why did I, I get this lamp? Because I was on a deadline. If I waited a little longer, the lamp I'd probably get for 10 bucks. The whole rig cost me 30 bucks uh, because the lamp was 25. So if I had a cheaper lamp, this would probably be easier. All right, well, mine cost me zero. Okay, <laughs> okay, smart guy. How, I, did, how did that happen? I used it with things I happen to have in the house, and I present to you the Scanorama CBE. Scanorama CBE, okay, what does CBE stand for? Cardboard Box Edition. Oh, okay. All right, so run, run us through your version of a book scanner. So what I did was I took one of the cardboard boxes that I moved with uh -huh. and cut a hole in the top, and I can put the iPad on the top with the camera pointing down through the center. And down below, I place my book. If I need to raise the book up, I can put a box in the middle. Aha, uh -huh, using a box, okay. In a box. Okay, I see. And, you got a box uh, in a box. So I've got here my old flight log, which is... Were you a pilot? Yes. You're just all kinds of interesting, are you? Surprise! The most interesting Patrick in the world. Uh, and so, I, and then over here, I've got lights. Now wait, what kind of lights are these? These look like those SEMA lights I've yep. seen before. These are exactly the SEMA lights. There's these two of them. These are about $20 a piece, and you just happen to have them. They have yep. this really great throw to them. They're small, they stay cool, they run LEDs, uh, and they're battery powered, so you can recharge them. I really like the way you, so yeah. what's, what's, your, what's your bracket there? Uh, gaff tape. Gaff tape, okay, I've, I'm, I'm familiar <laughs> with tape. I use tape a lot on my teleprompters. And in the back, I've got just white paper for reflectivity. Okay, so, so this, so far, you have spent zero dollars. Zero You've had the stuff in the house. Now granted, I think if somebody wanted to buy the lights, they'd have to spend about 50 bucks uh, for two, yeah, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Uh, the boxes, though, they cost somewhere in the million dollar range. You, know, you just happen to have or a bunch. two dollars. Okay, all right, all right, so you got this but, box. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you just put the iPad on top and start scanning. Now, your, your rig is inflexible, though. Like, you can't, you can't take a picture of a different rig, can you? I can do that. Well, you can put yours inside. And then I, can... I could try. Let's see if that works. <laughs> um, but I can also... No. <laughs> Mine doubles as a little photo studio. It does, So actually. if I'm selling things on eBay, I could have this nice lit display. Well, mine doubles as a lamp. But the, yeah. the people were asking in the chat room during the whole video, they're like, why didn't you use a scanner? Why not a scanner? And there's a reason for that. Some people like to have, I don't know, delicate old books. Maybe you have really old flight, ma uh, flight logs like Patrick does. This isn't terribly old. Or something that's really delicate. When you're pressing it up against a scanner, or if you, you want to do this non-destructively, you, know, you can tear apart a book and run it through a sheet-fed scanner, but you're losing that book. If you want to make sure the book isn't damaged, a photo is probably a lot easier on the actual uh, book as opposed to slamming it into a piece of glass and then turning the page. Uh, run into errors there. And Patrick, you're working on scanning your flight log right now. Yep, I've got it right there. And the program I'm using is Cam Scanner. Now, Cam Scanner is an application available for Android and iOS. Uh, it's available for free. There are a couple Plus and Pro models, and they give you a little bit of added functionality. We don't know exactly what it is other than losing a watermark, because right now when you get the free version, you get to take photos and it'll auto-correct a lot of things for you, right? Yeah, uh, so let me, I've got two pages, that's good enough for now. I'll hit done, and uh, it analyzes them. Okay. Okay, I'll go into the document. So you're going into the, yep. the flight log, and there you go, there's your book. There's the book, and it knows where the edge was, but you can also hit reprocess and change, redefine where the corners are so it'll get an even more precise image. It does do OCR with the plugin. I, it was free on my Android device. I don't know if it's free on iOS, and we'll look into that for yes. you. It can do OCR. Uh, it does have a bunch of other functionalities. And like uh, Patrick's showing you right now, you can change a lot of the autocorrection it does for you off, off the bat. You can change contrast and its little magic effect by the little star they have there. There's a lot of functionality in this, in this device, in this application, that is. And the weird thing is, Patrick, we don't, sometimes you don't even need to build a rig like this. You're able to take off-angle shots with this app yeah. and correct it. Yeah. Because we tested that out for a couple of times, but yeah, it's not I, the best. We took a picture at, it was about a 45 degree angle, mm -hmm. and it put it back up to uh, perpendicular. So instead of making the app do the work, we did a lot of the work for it, so that yeah. way we're getting the best quality. And this just look, this looks awesome. We should permanently install this <laughs> on the set. I like this thing. Uh, the CBE, it's actually, oh, wait a second, I, I missed the little trademark. You can't see it on this side, 
But on the top, it's Scanorama trademark. Uh, did you did you register it yet? Uh, not yet. So I'll you get can't to sue it me if I steal it. All right, sounds good. <laughs> so far, so now we've actually gotten our way to get all of our uh, books into our iPad or Android device. Some people really wanted to know how to make it into EPUB. Now the scanning software we were using does make uh, PDFs. So for the most part, Kindles and pretty much any e-reader can read a PDF. But if you really, really want to convert to something for the Kindle, like a Mobi file, or you want to have an EPUB file, you can do that using a free piece of software called Calibre. Uh, it's cross-platform. It's available pretty much everywhere. And it works really simply. Uh, I actually have it up on my, on my laptop. And all you got to do is just right-click something and go convert book individually. That's Aristotle. And on the top right, you can see output format. It says EPUB. Now, there's a lot of different options here. I can go to Mobi, AZW3, HTMLZ, Lit, any one you want. I would, you know, maybe I want a text file. You can do that right here. And it works pretty simply. You just hit OK, and then you wait. And then all you got to do is upload it to your device. So you can do that to your Kindle with a USB cable or an email address, all kinds of different ways, depending on what your actual piece of hardware is. So it's pretty simple to do this. There are some issues we ran into. Uh, there's the curvature problem. Yeah. Uh, so we have, if we have a certain book like, uh, let's see, what book do we have that has a nice curve? Where's the Diamond Club book? Well, we've got this book by Brian Brushwood. Brian Brushwood, and okay. It, you can see it. Yeah, so it's you can see it here. flat here. Yeah, so we don't want to destroy this book. When I was making my uh, copies of Aristotle, I just held it down and cropped my fingers out. Uh, pieces of glass would be great, except yeah. You're flattening out the book a bit, and you might have a, ref a reflection problem. Uh, you have to solve that with a different build. Now, I did have some piece of glass that I tried out last night that I had in a photo frame, which is kind of cloudy. Mm -hmm. But when it's up against the surface, it's perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. And that helped to reduce a lot of the reflection, but it still it got some glare. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of an help. issue. And the thing is, uh, after we did these crazy builds, I did some research and I found DIY, uh, DIYbookscanner.org or something like that. I'll have a link in the show notes. And there's about like 800 different designs for something like this. Uh, I know Google does a dual camera setup. Patrick and I talked about having two cameras set up with like a stylus that had two, fi two uh, fingers on it to yeah. actually take pictures at the same time. Build it out of Lego or something. <laughs> Build it out of Lego to have an automatic <laughs> page turner. And Brian right now is showing you Bookzorber. This is a piece of software that lets you take photos with a DSLR, it's a pay piece of software, and it figures out the curvature of the book for you. It costs, I think, about 29 pounds, British pounds. So depending on the day, that could be like $700 million US, because <laughs> our economy is so strong here. Uh, but, but that will take care of a lot of things. And because you're using a DSLR or an SLR, uh, if you're using these kinds of high quality images, well, you can scan two pages at once. The reason why I wanted to scan one at a time, my Samsung here has got an eight megapixel camera, your iPad's got, what, a five? So yeah. we want to have as much of that book to fill up that frame as we can. But if you have a DSLR, it doesn't matter. You can just shoot it as much as you want. And of course, one day we have to build the automatic page turner, right? Yeah. So why? Well, I mean, we're not going to stand there and hold the book and go, oh, yeah, we're going to turn the page. I saw an interesting one with Lego, and it had the tire turning the page as it turned. That looks so dangerous. And yeah, so there was a little thing. A tire on the book that would turn the page as it would go. And it just seemed very, very dangerous if you have any delicate papers. Yeah. I've been fascinated with book scanning since uh, I used to do a whole bunch of stuff in school. I used to study the tax code, and I had to carry around two giant volumes the size of about two phone books every day. And that's just the code, not the regulations. And I had lots of notes in it. My handwritten notes were in there, and I needed them to understand this code. But I had to carry them anyway. And I've been fascinated with e-readers for years. So this project, even though when I read the email, I thought it was a little insane. but. It's a cool project to figure out. Uh, so now you, I think you know how to do this, or you want a way to do it. Yeah. I don't know about this box thing. You know, this, uh, <laughs> it was free. It was free. All right. Okay. It cost me zero dollars. I will. I will give you credit for that, Patrick. Patrick, thank you for helping me come up with this stupid design. Oh, my first pleasure. of all, and then coming up with this brilliant design of yours here. Uh, well, I don't know. What do you do as your day job anyway? Because uh, you just always sitting over there. I just say hi and I just ask you questions. You're I'm not working my assistant, on Twitch website. You work on Twitch website. Yeah. Okay. Is it fixed? <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> it's, a, it's a work in progress. If people wanted to find you online because they stalk you, or they wanted to find you offline because you do all kinds of crazy cons, <laughs> where can they find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter at p Delahanty, and uh, 
I also have my website, AnimeCons.com, which lists so all my conventions. Yeah, you're an interesting guy. A guy's a pilot who started a bunch of anime cons and uh, builds stuff, fixes yeah. websites, you know, gives me crazy ideas. He's, he's a really handy fellow to have. And when he's in that office, he's getting an office one day. It's just really special. He's getting a door. I have a door. Oh, you have a door? Oh, that's right, it's a glass door. <laughs> We should make that glass turn opaque when you're in there. Yes. And so we're going to work on how to do that, too. That'll be kind of neat. Is that next week? <laughs> it might be next week <laughs> when, when I'm covered in, like, like glass shards. That'll be great. <laughs> but, yeah, so if you want to do any of these crazy projects, whatever we're going to do in the future, what we've done in the past, go to twit.tv slash kh. We've got a library of tons of projects, ridiculous ones, good ones, security ones, like encrypting your email with PGP. Uh, Shannon Morse was here explaining how to do this easily without having to use an email client, which if you do the email client setup, it's a bear, but it works. Webmail makes it a lot easier using Mailvelope. Check that out. We have, if you're noticing on our webpage there, that Patrick's fixing, uh, <laughs> I write tons of show notes. So if you want to know what we're talking about, you go, ah, yes, you talk too fast, you talk too slow. I just want to read stuff. You can read stuff at the site. And you can even download episodes in glorious HD at twit.tv slash kh. And you can pause, rewind, do whatever you want. And by the way, if you want to, if you got questions, comments, concerns, dirty jokes, whatever, we've got a whole bunch of stuff for the community. We've got a Google Plus community. Uh, you can find it at gplus.to slash twitkh, or you can go to Twitter. We have a hashtag. Use hashtag twitkh, and we'll take a look at that. Then there's also, what is that, email? Is that right? Knowhow at twit.tv. You can use that. And you guys are the smartest audience in the world, so we call you guys the bunch of know-it-alls. Brian, don't we call them know-it-alls? We do call them know-it-alls. Know-it-alls are <laughs> feedback segment. Today I was talking about this project on the air before TNT, and a fellow named Ron wrote in to explain his workflow for his own book scanner, which is portable, no less. Oh. He told me that he uses for his equipment a table top I a tripod, clamps, a Logitech C920 webcam, webcam makes it smaller, a book cradle, and uh, a, his laptop is a Dell 6220 i7 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. He has a huge workflow that he wrote out for us, <laughs> which I'll publish on the show notes at twit.tv slash kh. But we have this smartest audience and you guys on the Google Plus community helping out each other. It's over 3,000 of you in there. And when you got fellows like Ron writing in to tell you, oh, here's another design, it's freaking fantastic. Because there's at least, what would you say, 500,000 designs for this? Yeah, we came up with a dozen, maybe? Uh, yeah. We did two. We executed two. So we're going to keep messing with this. And uh, I'm going to not electrocute myself. So we'll see everybody next week on Know How.